What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another edition of the Crazy Face Uno podcast, where everyone has a story and everyone's story matters. What's your story? If you'd like to support the show and help us tell more stories like the one you're about to hear, please visit crazyfaceuno.com today. There, you can purchase items from our online store and donate. As always, I'm your host, Shane McNeely, and boy, are you in for a treat today. It is my honor and privilege to introduce our guest today. Please welcome Elise Jokinen. Welcome, Elise. How are you today? Hi, Shane. I'm doing really good. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. I'm really excited to have the opportunity to talk to you today. Thank you for having me. For sure, for sure. Uh, we f- met uh, literally probably like five minutes ago uh, via yeah. phone. Um, we are Instagram friends, followers, uh, however you want to say that. And uh, I've been following you for a little while. You've started doing some some cool stuff via like collage art and kind of connected that way. And make a long story short, here we are. We're having a podcast and, and we're chatting chatting today. So I'm excited to hear more about your story and things that you're interesting inter- that you're interested in and things that uh, um, make you you. Yes, one of the positive things about social media, I think, just yeah. ending up stuff like this where Absolutely. we meet people and yeah, it's cool. And I, I have another uh, similar kind of um, I don't know path to like doing a podcast with another gal next Sunday. Um, so it'll be fun. We, another person that I met through Instagram that is, uh, someone I've been following for a while and it'll be fun to have her on as well. It's, it's cool to see kind of these worlds kind of connecting and colliding and collaborating and working together. I really love it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Elise, like I said, I, we spoke on the phone for the first time about five minutes ago and now we are recording the podcast. It's really cool because I don't know a whole lot about you. Um, other than you know what I've seen on Instagram and whatnot, so I would love it if you wouldn't mind just kind of giving our audience and myself a little, um, yeah, just a little preview or a flash of kind of who you are and some of the things you're up to these days, vocationally and and uh, obviously with your collage art and whatnot. Yeah, for sure, definitely. Um, so yes, I'm Elise. Um, I am a artist. I work mainly with collage art, like you said. Um, I do digital collage art, so I do a lot of it um, right on my computer. And then also analog um, collage, which is like a cut and paste um, type of collage with like found um, magazines or found items and um, glue and kind of the whole um, mess in the kitchen kind of thing, which I love. Um, It's nice to take a break from the screen sometimes, too. (laughs) Um, I, I also shoot photography. Um, I've been shooting photography for a, over a little over three years. Um, nice. I shoot daily, and I have been shooting daily for the past three years. So we cool. can definitely talk about that. Yeah. Um, I'm a mother of two little boys. Aww. I have a three-year-old and a one-year-old, um, so they are keeping me so busy. Um, and I've also been married to my husband, Tom, for the past five years. Nice. Congratulations. Um, That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, I'm currently living in the suburbs of the Twin Cities in Minnesota. Uh, I've been here for about two years um, after almost a decade on the road, which I'm excited to talk to you about yes. that as well. Cool. Um, we were yeah. just talking before we got going, you know, as I told you it was going to come up. I, I love I love saying it and I'm going to keep preaching the good news and good words about uh, <laughs> Minnesota and the Twin Cities. It's such an underrated city, you know, one of the things we were talking about is how my wife and I just moved to South Florida from, um, you know, the Twin Cities and, and how it, you guys are actually, like, you're living basically, like, where she went to high school where? and kind of in the area. Yes. And so it's kind of cool uh, to connect via Instagram to a place that we're both pretty uh, familiar with. Yeah, definitely. It was a uh one of the big decisions I grew up up north um in Minnesota so it wasn't a hard decision to we had you know I had our second son and we were like Mm -hmm. where where's a really great you know Minnesota's a great place to raise children to so that was one of the big polls and um yeah the Twin Cities it really is an amazing place so we're really happy to be here right now that's awesome 
Wow. Yeah, we've we've got some things to talk about, it sounds like. So I'm excited yeah. to can you I mean you've kinda you kinda did touch on it a little bit, but um as far as you know, the different types, analog and um what was the other? Oh yeah, digital. So digital I do, and analog, um, yeah. Yeah. So the a lot of what I mean, if you're if you go to like my Instagram or something, a lot of what I share there is the digital um collage art which I actually just started doing digital this year. Um, 2020 is when I took like my first digital collage um, class online. Mm -hmm. But I've been doing analog. So like the paper cut and paste um, type of collage work for almost 20 years. I really started that um, in in, like junior high. um, Just kind of high school is when I really got into doing that. And I've done that for years like that's always kind of been like my little closet like secret thing that I like created yeah. out, outlet that I did and it kind of you know of course came and went throughout my life um over the past like couple decades but uh, it's something that I've done for a really long time but it's been really fun to take it digital and mm-hmm. start learning like online tools and yeah um, doing that that way as well so I'm having fun like with it being something that I've known but also very new and challenging yeah for sure did you ever I feel like it would transition really well into what you're doing but did you ever do like um scrapbooking and and stuff like that growing up yeah yeah definitely um I did a lot of scrapbooking um like vision board kind of all that collage type of thing like every every year for many years I made like a really big vision board at the beginning of the of the year and stuff so I've kind of always just enjoyed um, that kind of art. Sure. Sure. I remember I, I've always been really interested in art for as long as I can really remember. I feel like that creative side has always been something that's oh, really cool. drawn to me, but I remember doing cool. kind of like collage art stuff in, you know, some of the different art classes I took throughout, you know, uh, schooling, high school. Um, I don't know that I did anything like that in college, but I remember in, yeah. in high school for sure. And I can even picture oh. there's this one piece that we did where it was kind of the same concept, you know, where you cut different images out and kind of do your own little collage, add some pain yeah. or add whatever you want to it. And uh, it's, I think it's still at my mom's house back in Indiana. <laughs> where I'm, Yeah, it's like sitting in the spare room, you know, with like a bunch of other stuff that's like nobody ever goes through or looks at, but it still exists. Oh, yeah. It just like cued my mind of that, that old memory. So you're going to need to have her take a picture of it. Cause I want to see yeah. it. So you'll have to get that. Yeah. So I, I will. Can see. I remember being cool. so proud of it. I'm not sure that I would be now, but <laughs> yeah, you're like, Oh no, I don't want to know yeah. if I want to share it. But yeah, cool. I we'll see. see. We'll, we'll get her yeah. to take a picture. If she can figure out okay. mom, if you're listening, if you can figure out your camera, yeah. Got to got to give her a little hard time if she's listening there. So. Um cool. Elise, I think what I want to do is wh- let's do just a little bit further of getting kind of to know you a little bit and would you sure. tell us maybe three things that you would say, maybe words, things that describe you and are examples of kind of the person that you are and and who you strive to be? Yeah, definitely. Well, I think the one of the very first ones, of course, that I have to that that's always going to be number one will be family. That's, yeah. you know, being a mother has um, over the, you know, since my son was born three years ago has really taken over every aspect of, you know, my being and in, day to day. That's sure. the biggest part of my life. So um, the mother part, my husband, um just raising a, a good family that's number one and it will always be number one as much as I have a lot of different things that I do outside of that yeah um it's it's number one for sure awesome um another word I would use to describe myself or just describe my who I am is um creative I think I've always been a creative person from um, a young age but it's something that I'm really focusing on now as I'm getting older and really trying to um, push myself kind of in that area to to share and to always be, you know, be learning. Mm-hmm. And um, it's very rewarding for me. So I'm having a lot of fun with it. And I think we all need to have something that we are like 
passionate about and are having fun with yeah. um, and that's definitely creativity in all all different ways for me so from collage art to to doodling on my ipad to yeah um, you know there's just so many different um things that i'm kind of interested in with in creativity as a whole so mm. um that's another one for sure awesome and then one more the third one i would have to say um which i'm not really practicing a whole lot now because i do have a three-year-old and a one-year-old but um <laughs> I'm sure you got your hands full. (laughs) Yeah, would be traveling and adventure. And Mm. um, it's always been like a part of who I am. And um, it's such a big part of like my interests, um, which we like I said, we aren't doing a whole lot of right now. But we really hope to as our as our boys get older is to and of course, when we are able to again, kind of get back on the road and and do some traveling. Yeah, traveling is is honestly I feel like I've I've realized it a little bit more, even maybe since, you know, this pandemic kind of going on, but how one, how much I love travel, you know, just like, yes. just like you and th- that adventure and, and kind of just like learning new culture and experiences. It, there's just so much that I feel like Absolutely. your brain just explodes with uh, creativity. I feel like I'm more creative. I feel like Absolutely, when you're out yes. of your comfort zone, your senses are just so so heightened and you're looking and observing and experiencing so many different things. At least that's what I strive to do. But absolutely, it's way more of a privilege than I ever realized is, mm-hmm. you know, being able to tra- travel and, you know, whether it's because you have kids or financially or, you know, there's so many different pieces that go into that. I love traveling, um, but it's a gift. It's a real privilege to be able to do and to have that opportunity sometimes. Um, and it's something that I want to do more of as well. Awesome. Yeah. I think there's definitely a certain type of person that is into traveling and they're my people. We, I yeah. like, to, like <laughs> you know, I just, it's a, like you said, you just get to experience so much and, and it really makes life interesting to be able to see new places and try new things. And, mm-hmm. For sure. For sure. Well, at least let's, uh, let's just dive into it. Let's go straight back. Yeah. Um, oh gosh! <laughs> when we're talking about childhood, you know, what are what was your childhood like? How would you describe your childhood? Yeah. Okay. Let's do it. Okay. Let's this do it. We're going for it. I appreciate the transition. You. I, I'm just yes. full disclosure because this is the first time we're doing this. I, I realize it's a really like hard cut transition here for everybody listening <laughs> and for you. Yeah. But uh, you know, we're learning as we go, so we're, we're going to yeah. jump into it. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, So like I said, I grew up in northern Minnesota, um, north of Duluth. And people ask me, like, can you go north of Duluth? And like, (laughs) yes, you can. And that's where I grew up. And and up near the Spirit Hiking Trail. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I grew up um, a country girl. So I literally grew up like in the woods in northern Minnesota. Nice. Spirit Hiking Trail is one of my favorite places, too. I love it. Yeah. Yes. It's um, it really was like the best childhood. I wouldn't change it for anything. Um, my mom and dad are amazing. They're mm-hmm. hardworking. Um, I have two sisters. We spent a lot of time outdoors, you know, riding my bike, playing. We went to the lake a lot in the summer. Yeah. Even even if it was cold, we were outside. So, you know, I there's nothing about my childhood that I would change. It really, my husband and I talk about it. He grew up in northern Minnesota, too. And, you know, we've traveled mm-hmm. all over. We've lived in so many different places. And we always say, like, we would not trade growing up yeah. there for anything because it really was a great um, place to grow up, just being outside and out in the woods and your imagination just, you have to, you know, you have no other choice. It's right. like you have to have a great imagination and um, and stuff. So it was a really great place to grow up. Where are you in line with your sisters? I am the middle. I'm the middle. I have an older sister. Um, she's extremely creative. She's so talented. And um, my little sister as well. So we're we're all like pretty close in age. So mm-hmm. it was, um, and we're all really close now. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Do you fit the middle child stereotypes? Well, I don't think so. I would say <laughs> some some of them, I would say the positive ones. Absolutely, of course, yes. But, <laughs> but yeah, you know, I, I definitely could maybe see a couple things. Yeah, sure. Well, I'm an, I'm an only child 
uh, growing okay. up. I have a stepbrother and sister. They came along a little bit later on in life. And, you know, okay. it's it's funny. But I grew up in rural, you know, kind of middle of nowhere, kind of cornfields and bean fields and whatnot around me most of my life. And uh, so I kind of feel I, I completely understand because I feel like the creativeness had to come out because you, you got to yeah. get creative. Otherwise, you're just going to be sitting there twiddling your thumbs sometimes. Absolutely. Absolutely. For sure. What were some of the things you were interested in as a child? Um, you know, I would definitely it would be just some of the like, I mean, being outside doing mm-hmm. it. I love to be at the lake. That, that was one of the, I mean, the biggest things of sure. being outside. We were always, you know, had some type of game we were playing, riding yeah. bikes, um, you know, as like a young child those were anything that we were doing outside was like life at yeah. that time you know that's like for sure that's a i don't know i do you feel this is a unrelated question in some ways but do you feel like nowadays even how well here's a couple questions how does this affect how you're raising your boys um now like your upbringing and maybe your husband's mm. upbringing but also mm-hmm. Do you feel like people and, and kids are still playing outside as much as, you know, doing some of those same things or having those opportunities like maybe we did when we were growing up? Yeah, that's a really interesting question. You know, I I think that it's something that we really strive for. Um, right now, my kids are still so young. So it's kind of like for them to be outside, it's like I have to be with them. Right. And so we do as like we do as much as we can now that it's like getting warmer out that we're like we go outside like as much as we can. We're always going for walks yeah. and doing things. But definitely for what like we want for them as we get older mm-hmm. is to be as, you know, as close as we can to that and doing you know, staying active and, you know, there's Lebanon Hills here and we like to go for hikes and stuff like that. So now we do it as much as we can. I still have one that's on like a nap schedule (laughs) and stuff. So it's like, we still have to go throughout like our day, but as they get older, I think it'll be like a lot easier to be able to, to do that. Yeah, for sure. For sure. What did you say you wanted to be when you grew up? Yeah, so I was listening to one of the other um, interviews that you did, and I heard you ask that question. Yeah. So I was like sitting there thinking about it, and I was like, "Wow, like what?" And I remember like my earliest memory memory sure. about like what I wanted to be when I grew up. I was probably like around seven to nine years old, and like I wanted to be a business lady. I don't even know like exactly what that <laughs> what that meant, but like it went as far as to where like my aunt got me a briefcase for Christmas with like my own business cards with like my name on it and stuff because I was like so determined to be like a I business lady that. when That's I grew so up. Awesome. <laughs> so like I don't really know like what that meant, but like when it comes to like high school and stuff like that, um, I was so unsure. Like even going into my senior year, mm-hmm. I really did not know like what I wanted to be. Um, when I grew up, and I'm actually going to share like a funny a, a story with you. Is yeah, go for it. Um, for like in our senior year, um, at that time they had like a big thing in the hallway for like the graduating seniors. Mm-hmm. This was 06. I, I graduated in 2006. Same. And oh, you did. Okay, yep. yeah. So they, it was like everyone wrote down, like all the seniors wrote down, like what they were going to be when they grew up, or like you know what they were going to college for and like yeah. what they wanted to do. And I, I seriously wrote on the, on my card that was like in the hallway was like, I wanted to be a roller coaster tester because I seriously (laughs) had like no idea. And I was like, I hate that they make you do this. Like, I don't know. And I swear, like thinking back on it now, it was like, at least first be roller coaster tester. And I'm like, I seriously (laughs) feel like that was the next decade of my life. Like could be a roller coaster tester. (laughs) That's what like my next 10 years looks like. Uh, That's awesome. (laughs) So I feel like I did that. Like I did. (laughs) Yeah, I don't, know. That's so I don't know. But yeah, I didn't know. Like, you know, I really even in after high school, even now, I'm still like, I'm uh, not sure what I want to be when I grow up. All right, right there with you. Right there with you. I think yeah. about it. I think about it all the time. <laughs> I really do. I mean, yes, this is, you know, Crazy Face Uno is something that I've created and, and trying to grow and develop and, and awesome. see where it takes me. But you know, there's just so many different ways to look at some of those different things, you know, whether it's what is the skill teaching me that could allow me to do something different or, um, you know, I, I don't know. There's just so many things when you think about, you know, and I'm, I'm sure you're 
have similar thoughts potentially, um, you know, when you're doing some of your different art things of like, what, what is my dream? What does success look like? Mm -hmm. What do I want to keep doing this? Do, you know, is this, uh, is this the thing that I would want to do as a career, you know, and, and all those different yeah. processing moments, um, you know, constantly, constantly kind of checking in with myself. Do you, do you do the same thing? Yeah. Oh, always, always. And I think I kind of always have, you know, I, I, I love to read and I'm mm. always reading like inspiring books and I'm every year I write like the goal list, you know, and I'm like, yeah. what do I want from and my husband and I talk about, all the time like you know just always trying to keep dreaming and growing and I think that's just such an important yeah um, you know thing to do so definitely into that for sure I think this you know you hear a lot of people talk about you know wanting man I just wish I had more time or I wish I had that break and you know we found that time especially in the last you know month or so um unexpectedly in, in a lot of ways of kind of being at home and a little more time on our hands, mm -hmm. I think. And, uh, I hope that more people are asking those questions, you know, it's, it, it's, there is a silver lining in some ways, you know, uh, for, yeah. for this situation that we're in with the COVID-19 pandemic and being at home and, you know, allowing ourselves to kind of, here's, here's your opportunity to have some time to, to think. And it's not always on un, 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 uninterrupted, but, um, you know, I, I think that I hope that there's more people that kind of take a look at their life and go, all right, we got this. Like, we're, we'll be able to figure yeah. things out and maybe I want to pursue something different or, you know, whatever it is. Sometimes yeah. just taking ourselves out of our comfort zone, you know, whether it's travel or simply sure. being stuck at home that can really spark those creative minds and um, really make us reevaluate and, and take steps to be the best versions of ourselves. Yeah, for sure. I, I definitely agree. Um. What did you, were you involved in any like athletics, any, you know, extracurriculars like band or choir growing up? Yeah, yeah. So definitely I was still kind of moving through the years. So I really, I enjoyed um, school growing up, which I think is not like a typical, mm. like I, I liked junior high, I liked high school. Um, I enjoyed school. I was never super, super into like the academic part, but yeah. I had great friends and I had a lot of fun in school. Yeah. Um, I was in sports in junior high, um, and then kind of towards high school, I like got a high a job kind of during high yeah. school, and I I didn't play sports towards the end of high school, but um, I partied a lot in high school. I, okay. I had a lot of fun, um, and but one of the biggest things for me was especially like upon like graduating, and I was really really so set on kind of seeing what was out in the world. Like mm. I could not wait to graduate because I wanted so badly to like explore i had a, a high yeah. energy of like i want to get out there like i cannot wait to leave my small town nothing against my small town yep. but i just really <laughs> wanted to like try more and see more and do more so that was like kind of going out of like the school years my biggest mm -hmm. focus was to like where can i go and what can i do was like a big part of it and i traveled a lot as a kid um it was a priority for my parents to take us on vacation like once a year. So we, they would like save and we would go on, mm -hmm. you know, we would go to like Atlantic beach and kind of stay in a condo for the week with family. And um, we, we, I did a lot of traveling with them. And then my aunt also brought us um, on vacations too. So I had a lot of it. Um, I was really like kind of shown like this is what's out there. And mm -hmm. so that really sparked a desire for me to, um, to kind of explore. And once I was, 18 and like done with high school that's what I wanted to do for sure yeah I I think back on you you made the comment that you know your parents would save and and whatnot and, and allow you know your family to go on vacations and to explore and, and do some of those things and I had the opportunity as well you know growing up and I look back now and you think about some of those like sacrifices that your family made mm. and you look mm -hmm. at the things you did and then you like look at your own life and you're like, Oh wow. Like what a, what an opportunity. Like, I don't know for me, I look at it and I look at my family and I look at my parents and I'm so grateful for some of the opportunities I had as a young child and, and as someone, a young person growing up that I had. Oh, absolutely. And I know my parents are going to listen to this. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you for always making it a priority and, and putting a, you know, putting 
us first and and getting us out there and showing us you know my parents are travelers too they Mm -hmm. are they like the life on the road and and so it was it was always something that they made made happen you know even during the tougher times it was like that that was a priority too yeah do do that for us so i'm grateful do you and your husband do you have goals or think you know obviously your kids are pretty young right now but um is that something you want to continue you know with a similar uh, type of lifestyle as you guys think about being parents and grow your your young boys oh my gosh absolutely i have like a a list tacked in my room (laughs) of like places i want to go i'm like this is everywhere you know we are yeah for sure my i'm i'm very fortunate my husband's in the airline industry i mean right now it's a tough time but um he's he loves to travel and he loves um to see you know see places so we yeah. are right now I'm like we're like with the little ones in their car seats we we travel a lot <laughs> with our first and then once we had our second we were kind of like oh my gosh let's put the brake pump the brakes a little yeah. bit um and stuff so but definitely it, we, I know we will for sure that's cool that's cool yeah what, it's important what's uh you know you mentioned your parents will most likely be listening hello to your parents but um (laughs) how would you describe your relationship with your parents and and with your siblings growing up oh gosh um just uh well right now i would say just total awe and respect especially now being a mom like, how did you guys do this like it's so crazy but um and and even growing up you know we have we have a very close family my extended family is very close too so um, I'm just, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm so grateful for them. They're, they're hardworking. They really, um, led by example. It's something I hope to do with my kids as well. Um, and you know, my dad, he's a photographer, so he yeah. really has been like an influence in my life, um, mm-hmm. for like with my art, sure. um, a really big influence. He's so talented and creative in a lot of different ways. And then, um, my mom, she's a huge people person, so I think I definitely got that from her. I swear, yeah. she can make friends with anybody. I can make <laughs> friends with anybody. That's, like, definitely something that um, her Italian family, like, and that part of, like, the Italian family yeah. is, is very much um, within me as well. <laughs> and then um, my sisters were so close, and I I kind of, I actually kind of blame them that I didn't get into the arts a little bit sooner <laughs> um, because they are both so talented. Yeah. Um, my older sister can literally draw anything. She can make anything. And, um, you know, I'm a doodler at best. And, and my little sister can, she's like an insane writer. She can write and she's just so smart. And yeah. so I always, bl- I blame them. I'm like, if it wasn't for you guys, I would probably have gotten into art a little <laughs> sooner. But I just have like two crazy artistic sisters. And, and so... Um, yeah, they're, they're amazing. We're, we're still close now. So it's pretty cool. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, let's, let's move into, you know, kind of that adolescent timeframe, you know, we've, we've touched on it a little bit, but middle school, high school. And as we look at, you know, that timeframe, you, you did touch on this a little bit too, but how, what kind of a student would you say you were in, in that adolescent (laughs) timeframe? Oh, you know, I like I said, the academic part wasn't super important to me. I did I yeah. did well in school, but definitely was not like over the top. You know, I yeah. did what I had to do to like get through school, but I wasn't like I'm going to take all the extra, you know, classes. It really was um which now looking back, I'm so fine with that because I had a lot of fun. And I'm like when you're so young like that, it was I, you know, it, it was fun, and I'm glad that I enjoyed that time. Sure. Um, but, yeah, that's, you know, I definitely, um, I did sports when I was younger, and then um, just kind of, yeah, that desire to, to, to hit the road, mm-hmm. you know, as I as I got towards the end of high school. And and as you got to the end, you know, you, you mentioned how you wanted to be a professional uh Roller coaster. <laughs> Roller coaster tester. <laughs> tester. Um, what What were some of your influences uh, for the next stage of your life, like post high school? Yeah. So you know, um, a month after I graduated high school, I hit the road. So I grew up, like I said, up north. I mm-hmm. moved to the cities, um, like the Twin City area, right after high school, and I wasn't really sure kind of what I wanted to do. Yeah. 
Um, but I wanted to get into something creative. So I actually went to cosmetology school nice. and I had so much fun doing that. It was um, creative. I met, you know, a bunch of really awesome um, women and um, I got a job then after right afterwards working at a, an, a really nice um, salon he, right here in the cities. And, cool. you know, I was like chugging along and um, it was really awesome. But I was having kind of the same conversation. I was 20 years old and I was like having kind of the same conversation every day. And like I said, I really had that desire to travel. And I was like, well, what yeah. if I was to go like outside of Minnesota, not mm. just like the cities? And so um, I either made the smartest decision in my life or the craziest <laughs> decision in my life. But I bought a one way ticket to Maui at the age of 20. Oh, wow. And then that really that really like started my um, like next decade of my life yeah. of just like kind of being on the road and um and it was a, it was a really awesome experience so I did I was there for almost six months um in, uh, in Hawaii um living on Maui and it kind of got to a point where I was like okay I either have to get it together or I have to ha- <laughs> I, or I have to go home like I was getting kind of, I was like I'm broke yeah I, I either have to like really get it together or I have to go home so I I went back to Minnesota to regroup but I had that itch and then I was like, okay, I can really go anywhere and do anything. So like, what do I want to do next? So yeah. it, was, it was really kind of, um, I guess to answer your question, like the inspiration I had at that point was just to really get out and see the world. Yeah. What, what did your family feel about? How did they feel about your move to Maui? Oh, bless them. Bless my family because <laughs> they were just like, I, thinking about it now and having kids, I was yeah. like, how do you let your 20 year old daughter I buy think a back on that all the time. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and they were supportive. You know, my, like I said, my parents, I think at my, at that age were kind of the same way. I, you know, my dad was from Minnesota. My mom lived in New York. They met in Colorado. They were really um, kind of the same way. So they were just like, be safe. You know, we're always here if you need mm-hmm. us. And, they actually did have to help get my ticket to get me home. Right. <laughs> but then I paid them back. I paid them back. But it was, you know, they were always just like really supportive. Of course. And, um, and great. I was grateful for that, for sure. Yeah. Parents are are great to, to have as the support, you know, uh, for sure. I remember I've told this story maybe potentially on the podcast before, but I, I took a trip uh, when I graduated college uh, to Haiti for a couple months. And I got oh. there and I was about three days in. And I mean, everything that could have gone wrong really in the beginning, like I had a place to live, I had a place to stay, but it was just kind of a train wreck in the beginning. And I was like three days in, I had like 300 bucks left to my name and I was supposed to be there for, you know, uh, two months and I'm three days in. So it got wild, but I remember talking to my mom (laughs) and it was the same conversation. It was like, if you need to come home, I'll get you home. Like. Mm-hmm. it's not a problem. Like you just need to tell me what you need and what you want. And <laughs> it's like, Oh my gosh. Crying on the and phone. And I'm like, Oh, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to keep crazy. going. I'm not ready to give up, you know? <laughs> but. Definitely. And it, like looking back at it, you're like, what an experience. Like I'm oh. so glad I that. I'm sure. But when you're living it, sometimes it's pretty crazy. You're just, yeah. it, it was, you know, up highs and lows for sure with all of this, you know? Yeah. I look at it and I, exactly like you said, like I, I think back on it. I'm like, you were crazy. Like that was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm so glad I did it. It's, it's one of yes. the highlights of my life for sure. It's, it's up there, Awesome. but it's like one of those things where you go, Whoa, like, yeah, what was I thinking? And also, like you said, it also teaches you what you're capable of and for sure. problem solving and, you know, I'm never one, I don't like to give up easy. I'm not going to give in. I'm pretty stubborn sometimes. And, okay. uh, you know, thinking about that and being like, no, I'm not ready to like throw it in. But I was scared shitless, you know, I'm scared out of my yeah. mind. <laughs> like, and, uh, and you just never know, like you don't know what's going on. But I think it, it teaches you financial responsibility in some ways, you know, where I'm like, I'm in another mm-hmm. country. I've, I've got limited money, you know, I've traveled, you can travel pretty cheaply, but mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's something, a whole bunch of different things that allow you to, uh, your brain to kick into overdrive and start processing and figuring things out. Definitely. For sure. For sure. Uh, so Maui, you came back to Minnesota and yes. just were you were you basically like I got to get my my back on my feet and yeah. go after my next adventure? What what was next? 
Yes, definitely. So before I kind of go into like what was next, I want to just say I was um, just reading. Um, I just finished Elizabeth Gilbert's book, yeah. Big Magic. I read it again. Um, I really love that book. I had, it's been a while. So I read it again. And she said one of the most important things about being creative is to always follow your curiosities and to be curious mm. and always stay curious and to even follow just like your smallest curiosities and I just have to say that bef- before I get into like my whole twenties because it makes me feel a lot better about my twenties. <laughs> well, let's say it one more time. <laughs> just being <laughs> say say the quote one more time because I I love it. I just wrote down. You said "Big Magic" by who yeah. Was it? So I was reading "Big Magic" with Elizabeth Gilbert, and she says that one of the one of the most important things about being creative is to like follow your curiosities, and she gives you permission. Like in the book, she's like, "I give you permission." Yeah. to follow even the smallest of your curiosities and um and to always just stay curious and that will help lead Mm. to like a creative life i love that and so i because i literally was the most multi-passionate person i think ever i i tried a million things in my 20s i worked a million different types of jobs i took different classes and went to different schooling like i never did i never went to like a you know i never went to traditional college which used to be a point where i was like you know, like a shame point for me. Like I never wanted to bring it up that I never, and I'm like, you know what? I'm like literally been taking classes my entire yeah. life and yeah. I'm an, a lifelong learner. And so it's something I'm proud of now is that I'm, I've followed my curiosities throughout mm-hmm. my entire twenties. But I just wanted to say that before we get into it, cause you're going to, I'm like, people are gonna be like, she is, oh my gosh, all over the, all <laughs> over the place. No, but, I, I get um, it. I love it. I love the, I feel like this is something that I like, <laughs> I've wanted, you know, wanted to just kind of go and be, and I feel like I'm, I, I'm excited to hear what your story. So we'll, we'll let's just jump <laughs> okay. into it. Let's jump into it. I'm, I'm excited. All right, let's go. Let's go. So yeah, so I got back to Maui. Um, I went to Minnesota to regroup. Um, I lived there for almost a year. I was living with my parents again, and I was kind of trying to decide. I, I was working a waitressing job at night, and I was working um, at the YMCA during the day. Nice. And I started kind of getting into. Um, teaching classes and stuff there so that was really cool and that kind of opened up um, some doors of curiosities for me kind of leading into um, that and then uh, we had a a family reunion and my cousin was visiting um, Minnesota and her fiance and her lived in Las Vegas okay and they had just bought a house and there and they had an extra room and bathroom so if you can guess what my next uh, my next stop was was yeah I packed up my car and I drove um, from Minnesota to Vegas, I think two months after that. And, and I ended up staying there four years. So they're, they're so wonderful. I lived with them for probably half of that. Um, Yeah. They're the most generous, um, wonderful people. So yeah, I was there for the next four years. I'm living in Las Vegas. If um, you can believe that. (laughs) Yeah. How, how far were you from like, whatever the image that people have you know the strip in vegas yeah yeah well i swear all of my friends um thought i lived above margaritaville they're yeah like you're exactly. crazy that's so cool <laughs> and i'm just like yeah no i live in this you know like i live yeah. like 20 minutes from the strip which okay. it, like didn't even feel like they you know like yeah you were living anywhere near the strip it wasn't like that at all but i swear people just think like that you live like right there yeah you know? that's why i was asking because um, if if you yeah. if you're not familiar if, if i mean it's just the strip is a very it's like Times Square right but New York in yeah. New York City is huge and it's like the Twin Cities and you know kind of where you live now and and some of those different things it's there's there's still some space <laughs> yeah definitely yeah definitely so it was it was an awesome place and um I had I met some amazing people when I lived yeah. in Vegas and and that was actually where I got together with my husband then um, was when I was living in Las Vegas and how old were you at this point in time Oh gosh, I was 20, maybe 25 or 20. Sure. Maybe like 24 when I moved to Vegas. Okay. 25, 26, 27, maybe like 27 when I left, something around that. Oh my gosh. Mid, early, early 20s when I moved to Las Vegas (laughs) and I stayed there for, for four years. Did, did, I mean, obviously you had a pretty sweet setup, be able to go and, you know, live with some, some people you knew and, and, you know, rent. I'm assuming you rent their room. Um, yes. So, you know, like, did you have a, like, goal in mind before you went? 
Uh, so I didn't really have a plan. Sure. Um, it was it was kind of you know right after, but I I didn't go there with a job. But like I literally got there. We had a great weekend that first weekend. Like my cousin, my friend, um, road tripped with me out there. She like brought us to the strip, and it yeah. was it was like we had all this fun. And then like Monday morning, I went, I hit the streets with my resume, and I was like, I have to find a job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I did not have a job yet. Um, and so I had saved up a little bit of money. Yet, like you said, I had a place to land. Like that was always my biggest thing. Anywhere I right. went was Same. like, do I have a place to land? Yep. Like, once you have a place to land, I'm like, I'm confident I can get a job. So, yep. um, I, because I had gone to cosmetology school, I went to all, all like the local, um, salons and like big spas. And I actually got a, a job at a big spa on the cool. strip, like the first, my first week, um, doing like admin. And I did a lot of admin cause I feel like that's a pretty, like I'm, like I said in our text, I'm a Virgo. I'm organized. Yeah. I can literally do like desk admin stuff. I love it. With my eyes closed, and so that's like kind of my go-to. Like anywhere I go, is like sure. I can always get a job in admin. So I got a job at like a big spa there, um, which eventually led to a job at Zappos. I don't know if you're familiar with yeah. Zappos, but it's a yeah. I worked at their corporate office um, for the last three years that I um, lived there, and it was cool. So cool. So that was a really cool experience. What was your, was it admin as well at Zappos? Yeah. Yep. I I was at like the front desk of their corporate office, cool. um, which when you say corporate office for Zappos, isn't like a corporate office. It's, <laughs> it's pretty wild. If anybody's curious, there's a million YouTube videos on like the office at Zappos. But cool. I mean, we were like, yeah, it was, it was a pretty cool experience. Um, Did they get and bought I, out? I really enjoyed it. Did Zappos get bought out? Um, they, I believe they merged with Amazon okay. that kind of all happened afterwards, but they are part of M- like the Amazon yeah. companies yeah. now. Yeah. Cause they, they were, I don't know what they are now, but they were a big shoe company basically, right? Like you could buy shoes and, and whatnot from them. Yeah. Yeah. But it started as a, a shoe company and then, um, now they sell like clothes and all, yeah. Like, yeah, all that kind of stuff. Um, but Z- Zappos is from the word Zapatos. Um, it's like a shoes. But I used to That's do cool. tours of the corporate office, so I have like all that. Nice. I'm like anything you need to know. I'm like I've got it in there somewhere. <laughs> That's but, cool. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was super cool, and um, it was a great place to work. And I'm very grateful for my time um, in Vegas. And like I said, I met my husband there. Yeah. How um, did you guys meet? Was, so like we went to high school together um we grew oh, nice. up in the small town in northern minnesota i wanted to ask and, too what's your what was your class size oh gosh we had maybe like a little over 100 graduates cool yeah mine was They're 120 barely over 100 okay yeah so, so i'm small, right there with you small yep. class. yeah and that was like adding in a few extra people that you know whatever but i would say around 100 is, is pretty accurate for ours but our technical number is like 120 <laughs> yeah oh my gosh so yeah same same um kind of smaller um smaller school but um so we we actually graduated the same year of school nice my husband was a little bit more athletic and academically um <laughs> going got had that going on so we knew each other in high school we were friendly but we kind of hung out with different groups of, yeah. of friends but we were like facebook friends and everything so um, when i was living in vegas and he had actually gotten a job at u.s airways in arizona nice and he was single, so him and his buzzy buddies would, like, fly all over. Yeah. And I, I messaged him on Facebook a travel question. So this was eight years after we graduated high school. Sure. And so I messaged him a face, uh, travel question. And I, and at the end, I was like, hey, next time you're in Vegas, let me know. We can grab a um, lunch. And he messaged me back, answered me, and said, are you free this Saturday? And I was like, oh. Okay. Yeah, sure. So yeah. he flew, flew to Vegas that Saturday and we've been like together ever since. So Whoa, it's so pretty cool. crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Did, did you take him somewhere? Like how did you guys, where did you guys meet up whenever you came into town? <laughs> oh, it's hilarious because I said, do you like sushi? I know a really great sushi place. And he <laughs> said, I love sushi. And do you want to know how many times we've had sushi since? <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> None, because he does not <laughs> like sushi. That oh, look at him! <laughs> I know. Somebody had uh, somebody had a little was a little smitten. It sounds like. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So we would go. Um. So then you know, of course, we did long distance. So I would go to Phoenix, and then he would come yeah. to Vegas and stuff. So we would always you know go to different little coffee shops or. Um, very rarely did we go to the strip. We would kind of just do like local stuff, you yeah. know, when he would come visit and. We just kind of waited until, um, you know, we could get be together. 
Yeah. And it took a, it took a couple months, but we figured it out. What what was do you have any like memories or like highlights from your time in Vegas? Um, I would say definitely um, doing like little road trips and stuff. So my cousin, I really spent a lot of time with her. We're really close. Um, so she, we would do like, you know, different road trips to California yeah. or, you know, we were young and we were single. And um, so we would go do different or I was single at, you know, kind of in the beginning. And mm-hmm. so I spent a lot of time with her and her fiance and like their friends. Um, Zappos was a huge part of my story at that point. Um, So I have so many memories of just friends from there. Um, I did a lot of hiking like Mount Charleston and, um, you know, pool time, just going to like the casinos and and going to the pool for like the weekend and stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, I really got into like yoga and stuff when I was there. So I did like a lot of like workshops and retreats and um different like meditation thing it was just kind of that became like a bigger part of my life so it was funny because i like partied so much in high school and, yeah. and, and then like i moved to vegas where you would think yeah. like gambling and party and i like find yoga and i'm like trying to be <laughs> healthier and like do all this stuff so it was kind of a an interesting thing but you find you know after high school it's i feel like that's really the time that you find yourself in your interest and i really followed that it's exactly what I was about to say too, is that I feel like, you know, you even, you even crave that. You said that before you even left high school, you know, when we were talking is that you wanted to, you know, go and explore and travel. And I think all of that kind of leads to, at least for me, it was this idea that I, I wanted to find myself, you know, and kind of have my mm-hmm. own things. And it took me, you know, three years into college before I really reached that point where I was like, oh, like it's time to think yeah. for my on my own, you know, and, and totally um, kind of come up with my own, you know, that coming of age, classic coming of age story. I think we all have it. It looks a little bit different uh, for each of us. But uh, yeah, for sure. It's it's finding out what's important to you. And, and when you're on your own like that is the time that you finally get to have that opportunity in so many ways, you know, where you don't have mom and dad necessarily to lean on or you know the friends that you've grown up with your entire life to, yes. to really have this preconceived idea as to who you are and the things you like and things you want to do but at that point in time you're allowed to go and be and you know, explore and, and see new things and like you said and you're with your quote um it's that like it, continually exploring those ideas mm-hmm. and those thoughts and following that curiosity and dipping your toe in the water a little bit yeah definitely you nailed it and you know it's people i think sometimes when they see it on paper of like oh you live everywhere and you go and yeah there was a lot of times where i was broke i was lonely i was so unsure i was like what am i doing with my life you know like but um but all like all worth it. It's it's the mm-hmm. growth points. It's that those are the points where I can look back on and be like, that is what really changed me and shaped me into who I am now. For mm. sure. I keep reminding myself of that, like, especially nowadays with the start of Crazy Face Uno and, you know, mm-hmm. what I'm doing here is there's so many times that you're like, man, I'm not satisfied with where things are. And I shouldn't be. Definitely. But I have to I think it's very important that we don't forget that it's um being grateful and in, in recognizing all the things that we do have in the present. Yes. Um, yes. Because definitely. otherwise you're just left miserable and wanting and, and instead of like, oh, look, I have a, a beautiful wife. I have a dog that's amazing. I have this mm-hmm. beautiful life that we have here in, in South Florida. And like, no, I'm not where I want to be, you know, as a whole, but I never will be. And I, I'm, a, I'm a work in progress, but I have to visually look and, and be grateful and say, you know what, these are the things that I'm grateful for now. Yes. And it's a continuous thing. I feel like you always so, have to totally. check in. It's so easy to kind of wander into those other thoughts and it's like, bring it back. Like this is, you know, where I'm at now. And, and it's continuous. And I think, you know, it'll always be for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So you spent four years in Vegas Mm-hmm. You met your now husband there. Yes. Uh, part way through, a couple of years in. Yeah, towards right towards the end, because then I oh. I left Vegas um, with him. So we kind of both were like, okay, like yeah. where next? And was that was that the decision? To, like together, you guys were going to go somewhere. Yeah, his. Um, so he was working at U.S. Airways, and his company was um, mer- just announced like a big merger with American Airlines. So sure. he was moving to Texas with them. 
and it was kind of like okay and he and he asked me to go with him and i was like that is love because i was like <laughs> yes i'm gonna yeah. go to texas with you and um and so i was actually in school finishing up another curiosity i was in massage therapy school um and i had a teacher training in santa barbara i so right after we had decided to for me to go to texas with him i was finishing up school i went to santa barbara for two weeks to do a yoga teacher training like living in the hills in a yurt yeah um so after and then once that wrapped up then um, i moved to arizona briefly and then we both moved to texas together what part of Texas? Um, we lived in Irving, okay. which, uh, right outside of Dallas. Yeah. I uh, did my internship in college in uh, San Antonio. Oh, okay. So some so familiarity. Some Texas time. Yeah, yeah Good old sweet tea and brisket. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that was, it was nice. You know, we lived there for a year. Um, cool. We kind of knew it wasn't going to be our final destination. Um. But at that point, we were like, we're in this now, like we're together. And like, we kind of, I think we both knew at that point that we were going to be together for a long time. So we, we kind of, um, we're just like, okay, where, you know, where do we want to go from here? But we did spend, um, a year in Texas. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. When, when uh, so let's see. <laughs> You're like, oh, let's see what's, what's well, happening. <laughs> I'm just trying to go back. So you left, uh, you left Vegas. You yes. went to Santa Barbara. Yes. And you did some yoga training mm-hmm. in a year, which is pretty cool. Yes. How, <laughs> it was awesome. Was that like kind of your, what was that decision? How did you come up with that decision? Is that just the idea? Like, I'll do this. And then, cause you were getting into yoga in Vegas and then that was what you're going to do when you went to Texas or kind of where did that fall in line with, um, the next stages of your life? Yeah. So like I said, kind of when I was living in Minnesota again is when I started getting into yoga and then like kind of throughout my time in Vegas, I practiced a lot of different kinds of yoga and it was just something that I was really, like I said, just like really interested in and I wanted to learn more and I wanted to um, find out more, which, you know, of course I, I probably didn't need to go do a teacher training, but I was like, how do you, you know, you see something like going to live in a yurt in Santa Barbara and like study yoga. And um, it was just something that I, I really wanted to do and I had saw maybe like even before I met my husband this um I went to White Lotus in Santa mm-hmm. Barbara and I, it's something that I saw before that and it was just like one of those vision board things yeah. I was like someday I'm gonna do this and yeah. so it was like I sent my application and I and I went and um I this was kind of before him and I had decided to move where I like got all set up with it so it was kind of like I'm gotcha. gonna go do this it wasn't something that yeah. I kind of planned to do um, beforehand, but I and I did end up teaching a little bit in um, when we were in Texas, but um, not a whole lot. It was more of like the school. Like I just I like to learn and and mm. and do things like that. So it was just another followed curiosity, I suppose. Yeah, of course. I I love that. I I know you you've done several things, and I feel I feel like this is the same with me. I, I feel like we're on the same page here, at least. Yeah. But, um, which is kind of. I don't know. I, I, I've always followed those curiosity points too, you know, cool. and I get obsessed with certain things and I like mm-hmm. dig in and I'm just going to like mm-hmm. learn everything I can. And then at some point in time, I'm like, all right, I'm, I'm over that, you know, and I move on to the next yes. thing and I'm like, okay, now I'm going to dig into this. And then some of my own, this is, this is me is that I find myself, man, I know a lot of things, but I'm not really a master at anything, mm-hmm. um, which is, which is, frustrating sometimes <laughs> you know but they uh, they all tie together and oh, I, always. I definitely yep. under Shane I understand that feeling because oh I have felt it like I have yeah. felt it where I'm like oh my gosh I've I've changed course so many times mm-hmm. but honestly especially with what you're doing now and like yeah. you're saying how all the people on your podcast you've interviewed so far most of them you've known and stuff like if you didn't do all the things that you were doing, you wouldn't know all exactly. of the people that you know, and you wouldn't know be the person that you are. And and it can be frustrating being the person doing it. But I think even like looking back, you probably for me, I wouldn't change any of it. I don't know about you, but it's like no, you learn how to work with the pe- work with people the way that you do, and you like even like doing massage and do and going to the yoga. Yeah. it's like I it was all just meeting people that I love so much now like I'm like I couldn't imagine if I would have met that person or if I didn't oh yeah you know 
and just how it really has shaped into the person that you are today. And it's just, it's important and it's so easy to kind of get where it's like, what am I doing? But yeah. it all makes sense. And it, and it, it t- for me, it has kind of tied together because it has all been creative. Mm-hmm. And like, that's where I'm at right now in my life. So I'm like, none of it was wasted because it's all been like part of a creative path, you know? Totally, totally. And I find, you know, similarities in, in your desire to do some of that creativity and, and your art that you're creating. And it's, it's similar for me here. You know, I, anybody that knows me, anybody that, that are, that knows me just in general knows that I'm long winded. I like to talk. I like to dig into deep conversations. I'll be the, uh, you know, I'll play uh, devil's advocate just to play devil's advocate. Like I'll argue a point just to argue a point sometimes, Mm -hmm. like just because that's how my brain operates and I go back and forth. And this is, a gift of gab in some ways. And so here's a podcast, you know, and, uh, awesome. you know, I think that it's, it's where I'm at today is 100% what you're talking about is like all these different experiences that I've had over time, all the people I've met that allowed me to have some of the guests that I've had. And, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's cool. It's really, it's led me to, to be who I am today. And I, I really believe in something that is one of my like fundamental beliefs I guess is life's meant to be shared and Mm -hmm. I think that you know we do it whether we intentionally do it or not you're still sharing a part of your life whether you're walking down the sidewalk with a frown or you're crying or you smile at the person you shared a part of you you shared something with that person and um, you know and that's just the smallest end to the most in-depth and deep you know conversations that you have with with people and um, you know one of the the posts that kind of spurred this along was you know, I have a few people in my life that I really, I have a lot of people in my life that I really like lean on and value, but some of my Mm. best friends, man, we have some of the most deep and, um, you know, honest conversations that I can have with them and I can't have with anybody else. And, you know, sometimes it's the opposite. Sometimes it's the lighthearted. We're going to sit and drink whiskey on a video chat and for six hours, you know, and yeah, <laughs> talk about it's random so things. Yeah. But just um, as important. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But I, I really truly believe that. And I think that, you know, all of our experiences like, like shared can, can really venture into a bunch of different categories, you know, of, um, whatever that means for you. And, and even the skills and the things that we learn and the things that interest us, those, those curiosity points, I think, um, are all part of that sharing process. Yes. And and they all have to happen, you know, it's to get to where you are. So for sure, I agree. And I wouldn't, same, I wouldn't change a lot of things. I've talked with that with my friends, you know, I went to a very conservative Christian school growing up and knowing what I know now, would I go back and do that? Probably not. If I could Mm -hmm. take what I have and go back, but the friendships and the relationships that I've built and the person that I am today, because of that, I I don't think I could alter that, you know, like I wouldn't be me. And, uh, definitely. And those are very important things. Uh, who I am today in that process, I think is, is meant for me and it's important. For sure. So Elise, bring us along. You, you were in All right. Dallas, Texas area, Irvine, Irvine, yep. Irving, uh, yep. Irving, uh, for about a year, you said, what came after yes. that? Um, so at that point, yeah, we, you know, we didn't have any kids. I wasn't attached to any kind of job. I was working at Four Seasons um, for a little while, and I was just kind of doing some odd jobs. And um, so we were sat down one night, and we're like, if we can go anywhere, if we could do anything, like, where would we go? What would we do? Mm. So Hawaii, duh. That was like, okay, we're <laughs> like, let's go. Let's go to Hawaii. Yeah. So that was kind of the next step. So um, <clears throat> my husband applied for a job there. And amazing him, he got it, and um, and they moved us out there not long after. So wow. back to Hawaii, we went. Um, he had actually lived in Hawaii as well, which is crazy. Our paths really were – it was destiny. Yeah. But, yeah, so he had he was familiar with it. He lived on Maui um, at some point at a different point than I did before we got together. Um, so we moved to Oahu. That's cool. Um, which is the island with, like, Honolulu. But we yeah. went, we moved to the windward side, like um, – yeah, like Kailua, and we were there for three, almost four years. Okay, in Hawaii, did you love it? Hawaii was amazing in every way that Hawaii could be amazing. Um, <laughs> we we loved it. It was great. We lived in this smallest little studio p- apartment. Um, yeah. we we did a lot of island hopping. We made great friends. 
um, the first day we were there, he proposed to me and oh. um, we got married like within that next year, I think. Um, and we got married back in Minnesota because that's where, our, you know, we, of course, yeah. we came home. Yeah. Um, which was awesome. And that's where we had our first son. So kind of right after we got married towards like the end, we, um, my son was one, a little over one when we moved. So yeah, we were there. Yeah. It was, was that awesome. a reason for moving? Was that one of your, the, the reasons you guys moved back? Yeah, it was like, moving back to the mainland was one of the hardest decisions I think mm. ever. Like we, either of us have ever made. Um, we had our first son. He was a little over a year and we found out we were pregnant with our second son. Cool. And it was kind of at that point that we were like, oh, like, what should we do? Yeah. And it, was, it was not an easy decision. Um, but like, uh, I have family here. He has family in Minnesota. Yeah. His mom's in Arizona, um, mm-hmm. mom's stepdad. So um, we're close to them. So we um, made the decision to come back to Minnesota. Um, and we kind of stopped in Arizona for a few months and then moved back to Minnesota after that. So. And nice. that leads us back to today, where we are. We've been here almost two years now. Cool, cool. Two years back in the cities, getting your yes. getting your bearings back, right? I mean, yeah, things have changed. Yeah. I'm sure. Uh, I know you didn't have the green line when you were probably living here. Yeah, like yeah, St. Paul definitely. And some of those different pieces, that, you know, the Twin Cities have have grown quite a bit, and some new things added to the mix since you've been back I'm sure yeah yeah definitely and it's been fun to kind of explore I think when you're younger you know I haven't we haven't lived in Minnesota for a long time so we're like wow there's a lot of really cool stuff to do here so we're trying to um, kind of figure out like you know what we can do and to kind of explore Mm. the the place that was home but that we didn't really get a chance to do too much you know when we were younger so one of my favorite things about the Twin Cities is the food scene and I think yeah. it's, oh my gosh, the amount of, you know, f- just amazing chefs and restaurants that are um, in the Twin Cities and continue to come and grow uh, in the Twin Cities are, it's incredible. There's so much good food there. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. We're, we're excited to be exploring it and yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a, it's a great place. So we're coming out of winter now. So now we're like. Finally. You know, of course, home, um, yeah. but we're that, looking forward to when we can. It's the hibernation. Back. You know, you come out of hibernation. We, you know, we lived with, we had neighbors. We were close with all our neighbors. But I swear that there was like three, four months out of the year in Minnesota that we just didn't talk to each other. You might like nod mm-hmm. at each other when you're shoveling snow, you know, and yeah. grumbling to each other as you're shoveling the snow out of your alley or sidewalk or whatever. And, uh, yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> and then spring pops and then everybody's like, Oh, Hey, how's it going? <laughs> yeah. How, how was yeah, your winter? <laughs> so. yeah, for sure. Well, at least, sure. uh, how did you kind of jump into, you know, and find your creative side and, and really jump into the art that you're making now and, and some of the stuff that you're up to today? Oh, thank you so much for um, getting into this. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, so the art started, which is interesting, is after my first um, son was born. And this is kind of what led me back in it was actually through photography. Yeah. Um, so like I mentioned before, my dad's a photographer, mm-hmm. and he documented a lot of like our lives growing up. I have mm-hmm. just like some of the best pictures of my childhood. And it really inspired me to want to photograph um, my son as as he grew up. So yeah. Um, I somehow convinced my husband I needed like a big DSLR camera. I literally <laughs> used like an actual poster board and gave him a present a presentation on nice. like why I needed it, and he was like, "Okay, I can't argue that." Like yeah. <laughs> that was pretty pretty good. So, what was your um, first got, DSLR like, camera? Do you remember? Um, my first DSLR, I have it. It's a, I have a Canon 6D. I still nice. have it. Love it. I upgraded my lens once um, since I've gotten into it, but um, but I love it. It's a, it's yeah. a great camera. I'm trying and to talk I, myself into getting a. A DSLR camera now oh it's yeah, not really 60, much of a yes. <laughs> it's not really much to talk me into I've already like decided I want it it's just okay. a matter of uh pulling the trigger you know so okay well let's chat after because <laughs> yeah, I've got sure. a lot of opinions on it I love it yep. uh, it's, so now it's like such a big passion of mine I have friends like will message me all the time on Instagram and like hey I want to get into photography yeah. and I'm like 
and I like send them yeah. like five <laughs> huge messages. They're like, okay, thank you. <laughs> well, thank perfect. You. That's what I need. I, I reached out to a few people and I've done some research. So we'll, we'll chat for sure. Okay, let's chat. Yeah, let's chat. But um, yeah, so I convinced my husband and he was like, okay, like that sounds good. And um, so we, we made it work and, um, and I got it. <clears throat> so I started like learning. I like hit the ground running. And, yeah. Um, I was really determined to like learn all the dials and, mm. and figure out how to shoot. And so I kind of started on um, Skillshare. Have you heard of Skillshare? I have not. The, you can oh, Skillshare. Bet I'm going to write cool. that down. Skillshare. Yeah. It's pretty cool. And so I got like a membership on Skillshare and I just started taking classes and like the photography classes and like learning the camera and um, all of that. <clears throat> and kind of once I exhausted like all of the classes on Skillshare that I was interested yeah. in. I started taking classes at like another um, school with an actual like interactive teacher and like a small class and stuff. So I started Mm -hmm. kind of taking classes there. Um, But it really was like having my kids, which is crazy that kind of inspired and sparked my creativity. Sure. And I had no idea like what went into taking pictures. I was just like blown away with like learning about composition and light Mm. and story. And it was all like so fascinating to me. And I just couldn't get enough. And then photography just started kind of leaking into like the art world. So I've like mm-hmm. study like, you know, some of my like favorite photographers and it just kind of like led me back into art and, and all of this. So it really just kind of like opened the door back into like my creative side even more. And, um, it was actually this year I was on Skillshare kind of cruising through classes, kind of looking for, it was the winter, so I didn't shoot a whole lot in the winter with like, I kind of have been, I kind of been taking pictures with other people as well. Um, and I just kind of shot like at home and I was sitting here in the winter and I was on Skillshare cruising for photography classes yeah. or like doodling classes. And, and that's when I saw a class on digital collage art. Yeah. And I was like, Oh, like digital collage art, that, that would be fun. And so that's kind of how sure. I jumped into collage was from looking at like at photography classes on Skillshare and it just kind of led like right into um into that so that was like at the beginning of 2020 um but beautiful i yeah yeah it's just i it's never ending i'm like this is going to keep me busy for the rest of my life yeah <laughs> like never ending you know for sure and you have uh you have some of your your work that's for sale as well yeah, I just started selling prints um, of the collage prints, and yeah. it's it's so cool to see people like excited about it and like messaging me, and it's just been really um, fun. And I've been like really staying up way too late at night. I just very <laughs> it's it's fueling so you know to yeah. create yeah it's just, it's it's like gives you energy to be like excited yeah. about it and have other people excited about it. And so yeah, I'm selling prints on my website. Um, I just kind of started doing that. I hope to kind of turn it into a shop, but right now it's like DM and I'm like, that's yeah. okay for right now. I'm going to let it grow totally. organically, but well, tell but, people, yeah. you know, where people can reach and, and kind of check out some of your stuff. Yeah, definitely. So I have, um, my website, I'm, I'm most active on Instagram. I'm at Elise Jokinen on Instagram. Cool. I also have my website, which has a lot of, um, my collage work photography work i have like per, like my personal stuff like yeah. i said i've been i take a picture every single day every single year and i don't i don't like when am i ever gonna stop this i like <laughs> i can't stop so i have like a lot of like my personal work on my website as well um i send out a creative container newsletter every monday morning and you can sign up on my website on the top um banner so that's kind of fun. Cool. It's just a bunch of resources and ideas yeah. and books and anything that I'm like really excited about at the moment. I, and kind of prints and all of that, um, is there too. I got to get signed um, up for that. I'm, I'm excited. Yeah. I, I've written down photographers and books. Those are two questions I want to ask you about eventually. So oh, cool. store yeah, that in the definitely. back of your mind. And when we get to it, you know, we'll, we'll go through, you know, maybe some books that you're interested in and, and you love and some photographers that you like and some of those yeah, different things. For sure. For sure. Um, what has been, you know, some of the, you know, I'm really interested in the picture a day and kind of where that started from and, and when you started taking those pictures and I don't know. Yeah. Like what it's, what it means to you and kind of where it's going and and what you're doing with that. 
Yeah, definitely. So when I took that very, the very first interactive photography class, it was at the Define School, which is not um, open anymore. But I had there's um, another school that kind of does something similar. But we kind of got really close, me and the women in that class, and yeah. they were doing a 365 project starting that year. Was it? Oh gosh, 2000. 18, 19, and I'm in my 20s. So 2018, they were doing like a photo of the day Facebook group. Yeah. And they were all like so much better at, you know, they ha- they were really kind of advanced and they invited me to join the group. And I was like, definitely like I'm in. And so I started it with them and it was such a year of just like growth. And we were a small group. We would post like every day and just kind of give each other feedback. It really was like so huge on my um, on like um like for learning and everything like that. So I started with them that first year. I shot a photo every single day, and I made like a big photo book at the end of the year, like a a nice big hardcover book for my family. And then like that next year was coming up, and my husband's like, "Are you gonna do this again? Like you have to do it again." And I'm yeah. like, "Oh my gosh, like definitely, I'm gonna do this again." So then 2019, <laughs> I did it again, and and then like 2020 was coming. I was like, "How do I like? You just can't stop. Like I've yeah. been taking a photo every single day." for the past so it was really with the group kind of that first time and now I just have like such a good workflow that it's pretty easy for me to do it and um it's like for my second son I literally have a picture of the pregnancy test that I took and Mm. I have been taking a picture of him every like of our lives our lives every single day since like before he was born and he's 18 months old so it's just so cool to have these men these memories and it really isn't anything like I'm not trying to take like the best picture every yeah. day. It really is some days. It's just like, you know, my three year old will take a couple bites out of his apple and it's like sitting in the light and I'll like take a picture of that. And it's just like mm-hmm. his little hands or like, yeah. you know, just like little, little things from our life, which the first year I did it, we had a huge year. We moved from Hawaii to Arizona, back to Minnesota. And so it was just like that year was so yeah. cool because it went so fast and it was crazy. And, you know, I just, I couldn't imagine not having those memories. And it, it really is all about the memories for me. It's just like learning my skill. There's no better way to learn a skill than to do it every single day. So like True. the learning part and then the memories, I just like can't imagine not doing it. That's so cool. That'll be that'll be really fun to see and to, to look back on. I mean, it's a it's like a living piece of work. Yeah, definitely. And I, I print a big book at the end of every year. I literally didn't even miss a day when I was like giving birth to my son. Like I still took a picture that day. So it's like I have, and I'm, you know, I'm a Virgo, so I'm pretty strict about it. I have like missed a couple days here and there that I just kind of plug in a different picture, but very rare. Like very, very rare. Do I miss a day? I get that. I get that. It's that. Yeah, I get that. I I love that. That's so cool. Yeah, it's super cool. Do you have like your, is it your books? Are they just for you? Or is that something that you are, you know, have for sale or is an option for people as well? You know, it really is um, just like family stuff. Yeah. Like it's really just like my kids, like his little toes and like, you know, little sure. stuff like that. So I, I've only printed one of each of cool. them um, every year, but I do have like a, a prints on my website. If there's anything that yeah. I'm like, wow, this is like a really cool picture. I'll put it as, and I, I do have some photography prints like awesome. online that I, that I sell. And even on my, Instagram I'm like people aren't even gonna know I have kids because it's like my art Instagram but I'm like I have my secret little private mom sure. one that I yep. like spam every day of like this is every bit of my son's everything yeah. so it's like I kind of keep that separate because I do like take so many pictures of them mm-hmm. so I share so many pictures and I was like I need to reel this in a little but instead of doing that I just have their they have their own little space yeah um, I love that I love that we do you know my wife and I we have those kind of accounts as well you know we have yeah we have an account for our dog you know okay yeah. you know like it's it's our child i know that's ridiculous oh, yes. but like that's <laughs> he's our he's our buddy so you know it's randomly course. i try to do consistently you know throw a couple pictures up but it's it was funny because when we first got our dog it was one of those things where I w- we would take our whole camera our whole phone you know camera roll is like just pictures of our dog of course so i was like well we've got all these pictures what are we going to do with them they're just sitting on our phone yes. they might as well get out there and so i get Definitely. i get some of that stuff you know and like having your own like just a a dump account in some ways where you just kind of throw a bunch of pictures on and play around with stuff and and have fun and be creative it's cool definitely for sure you mentioned that your you know your boys 
have been a real inspiration um, to you. What have been some other people or, or things that have inspired you throughout this process, throughout your life? Yeah. Oh, gosh. I could seriously do a whole nother podcast with you about just like the people that have influenced yeah. and inspired me. And I'm so grateful to all of the teachers that I've had in my mm. life, cause the people that are just so generous and open with what they know. That's why I've always promised myself that I will share anything I have, anything I know with everybody, because I've been so lucky to come across like some of the best people. But, um, you know, definitely my boys, their sense of wonder. Um, my yeah. husband is a huge inspiration to me. Yeah. Um, he is actually an Iron Man and Cool. Just watching him go through like that whole process and uh, like trains, there's nothing that can be more inspiring than to see someone chase a dream like that and mm. accomplish it. So he's just like mentally fit, like just such an inspiration to me. Um, and I just like respect him so much. So of course my kids, my husband, um, when it comes to creativity, like I said earlier, my dad, um, he's a photographer as well. And, um, you know, my mom, just the, the person that she is, and um, they have been just like such an inspiration in my life as well. I mean, my whole family, I could just go on and on, yeah. um, you know, but when it comes to like create creatively and like in the art world, you know, some of the photographers that I that I really love um, their work um is some of the professional photographers like Sig Harvey. She's someone that I just really can like sit and look at her work all day. Yeah. Um, Jessica, Jessica, I think Buck, Buckhouse, I don't know how to say her last name. I'll have to uh, send it to you, but yeah. she does a lot of really creative work. Um, it's just like really quirky images. Cool. Um, and then some like local photographers here, Jessica Hollick. Um, I never say her last name right, but she's okay with that because she said nobody can say it. Um, <laughs> I can I can give you kind of like a little list of some sure, of those people. Sure, yeah, that'd be cool. I um, love to check some of that artist stuff wise, out. Artist wise, um, one of my friends, Lauren Roth, um, she is in, in Hawaii. She's an incredible artist in Hawaii, and I just like can't get enough of mm. her on Instagram and just like the not only the art, but just like the I mean, badass woman entrepreneur that yeah. she is, is just like so fun to watch kind of her journey as That's well. Cool. Um, yeah. And you know, afterwards I'm probably going to hang up with you and be like, Oh my gosh, I have like, yeah, think about like, that I want, that yeah. I like love. <laughs> yeah. And like, I could do a whole nother talk with it, but, um, yeah, it's so they're just having those people in your life that are just like so willing to be generous mm. with their creativity is just so cool. And I appreciate every single one of them. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I think it's such an, a cool thing. I, I love that. It's one of my favorite questions. You know, there's several questions that I really love, but I, I love that question because we've all had a hero, you know, in our life. We've all had those people that inspire us, that motivate us, that have had our back throughout the years, you know, and, you know, some of those people stick out sometimes more than others. Sometimes, you know, those inspirations are, have more of a, you know, dominant role in our life than others. But, um, there's always, there's always new people and new things and everybody's different and perspective is so, so unique to each individual person. I, I think it's really cool and fun, fun Definitely. thing to learn about, uh, with, with everybody, with people. Definitely. hundred percent. You make, you mentioned, you know, a couple books and you've talked about books you like to read. Is there any oh. books that you're reading right now or, or books you would recommend for, for our listeners and myself to check out? Yes. Uh, oh my gosh. I, so like my perfect day would be like going to Barnes and Noble, getting a coffee, yeah. wandering around and picking up every interesting book and like sitting in the chair there all day. <laughs> That's like my perfect totally. day. So books are like my thing and um, I love them so much. And I actually, I write a lot about like the books um, that I read and stuff on my blog, mm -hmm. on my website. So cool. you'll have to check that out. I've yeah. kind of been doing like a 2020 reading list and just, nice. especially since we've been home, I've been doing a lot of book time. I so love it. even with my boys. So um, I just finished up, like I said, reading um, Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert, yep. which is um, one of my favorite books. I really love her perspective on just like creativity. And um, she has a lot of wisdom, I feel like, to share. And it's so good. And I just also finished reading um, a, The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield. Have mm. you ever read that? I've 
I've uh, I can't say that I've like sat it. and read through it all. I have it. I own it, but I haven't. Oh. I've like more thumbed through it than I have like okay. sat down and read it. But uh, I do own it. Yeah. So yes. Okay, it's a good one to kind of thumb through because it's like those short little yeah. words, so you can really just like pick yeah. it up and like look at one or two. But um, just kind of his ideas about like going pro and like really looking at like yourself and what you're doing as like being committed to it and that it's not always going to work out all the time and it's not going to be fun all the time and it's not going to be rewarding all the time but like doing it anyway so i just Mm -hmm. love like that kick in the butt that's like you know that his perspective has to offer so i that's always like one book that i tell people like read the war of art yeah it's really good totally that's awesome well yeah yeah elise is there i have generally at the end i have about four questions Okay. Three or four questions that are potentially maybe the tougher questions of the, of the bunch, um, which I Ooh. know is is aggressive, but uh, <laughs> I like to soften you up, get you to the end, and okay. then, you know, really okay. hit the hammer. But um, click. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not going to hang up on you. But yeah, go ahead. <laughs> if we, you know, before we get to those questions, I want to give you an opportunity. You know, is there anything you want to share with us? Anything you know about your life, or you know, anything you want to tell our listeners before we kind of start our closing out process yes and i appreciate this question very much and i appreciate that you're kind of giving me the time to say it and i i've thought about it even before our call like if i can say anything and it and it kind of has to do with just like creativity yes um but if there's like one thing that i can share it's that i just if there's one thing i can share of like anything about like this my story and maybe it's just because I'm getting older and I care less what people think, but I spent a lot of time kind of being insecure Mm. throughout like my twenties. And I just want to say like, if you're drawn to something like, and you're curious about something like play and it's okay to be bad at something and it's okay not to like be perfect right away. Mm. And it's okay to feel like you don't fit in and like, you don't need permission to pursue your curiosities and you don't need permission to play. And if there is something that you want to learn, like there are so many resources and if if there's one thing I can pride myself on it is that I'm a very resourceful person like if I don't know how to do something figure it out and I really Hmm. like urge people like if you if there's something that you are interested in or there's something that you want to pursue if there's somewhere you want to go or if there's some like figure it out there's so like you can literally go online and learn anything right now anything like you can teach yourself Lightroom. You can teach yourself Photoshop. Like you can teach yourself mm-hmm. for free. Like yep. even if you don't want to pay for the classes, like there's a way to find everything. Like yep. you will get frustrated. You will c- probably cry in front of your computer as you're learning something <laughs> yep. because I've been there. <laughs> yeah. But like there is a way to do it. And so if I can share anything with someone, it's like use your resources if you can and figure it out if there's something that you want and it's okay to suck really bad but mm. just like keep keep trying and keep doing it thank you cool thank you for saying yeah. that i sure. i don't know if anybody else is going to take anything from that but like i'm taking that to heart for sure cool. and, you know throughout this we tuesday uh this next tuesday which we'll post this podcast in uh in a few weeks couple weeks here but um okay. we'll be posting our 100th podcast and wow, awesome. yeah, it's, it's really cool. I mean, especially the long form, you know, we're, we're getting close to that 90 minute mark ourselves, but it's just really cool to know, you know, we said it in the beginning, I, this is the first time I've really done this with someone that I'm not familiar with and I'm continually learning. And it's one of the reasons that I don't do any editing. I, I put it out there mm-hmm. straight and, you know, I've fumbled through, you know, at, at times throughout this podcast and throughout mm-hmm. other podcasts and it's, um, you know, it's part of life. And I think that that's one Definitely. of the reasons that I like posting just an uncut, unedited, you know, in a world that we try to post everything that's perfect. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I, I really do appreciate that your sentiments cool. and, and just giving permission to fail. And I, I think that that's really yes. important for everyone out there that it's okay to try. It's okay to fail, but don't mm-hmm. settle for that. You, you get to continue to go and grow and learn and, um, you know, make yourself better. I, I'm better than I was the first podcast. And I know that you listen to that first podcast and you can hear that, I'm sure. Um, and there's a long ways to go, right? But Definitely. everybody that's listening, don't be afraid to try and get out there and, and it's okay to fail. Definitely. Congratulations on coming up on your 100th um, podcast. Thank and you. It's, it's so not easy to put yourself out there mm. like the way that you are with this. And <laughs> yeah. so congratulations and yeah, keep going. It's Thank you. 
it's rewarding when you can push through the uncomfortable. For oh, sure. for sure. Yeah. And it's half the battle. And, yes. And just set the date and time, then you can't back out. Yep. And you're like, oh my gosh, I have to do this. <laughs> like, yeah. And I know. would, I'm, I feel like I'm in that process of my life that yeah. I've over the last several years for sure, but of working towards caring less about what other people think. I'm a recovering uh, people pleaser. <laughs> okay, definitely. And, and I feel that and I understand that a lot, you know, you it's funny the things you will bend over backwards to do for other people but you won't do for yourself. Yes, for sure. For sure. Well, Elise, I got these four questions. You ready? I'm ready. Let's All right. do it. What would you say you're most proud of to date? Um, definitely 100% hands down <laughs> the birth of my two yeah. beautiful boys. I just yeah, they're um, it's awesome. amazing and we did it and I'm like wow yeah so that's awesome I for love sure. that. they're my biggest pride you should be you should be and and it's it's a obvious answer and it's a yeah. it's a very important answer as well you know and I get that I, I love that I think it's awesome for sure. for sure what do you look forward to most in the future do you have any goals or ambitions well, first of all, getting out of this house, that's oh. probably like the number one thing. And Preach. Like, I, seriously, <laughs> how is it, is it okay to say something as simple as like going to the bookstore? No, no yes, this I is okay. I just can't wait to like get out of this house and go do uh, something that I took for granted mm, so much before. Yes. But um, other than just like the super simple answer of like, I can't wait to go to, you know, half price books for the day and wander yeah. around um, <laughs> is just to get out there and, of course, like travel with my mm. kids. And um, my one of my favorite parts of traveling is like, you know, I think you mentioned this in the beginning was that heightened sense of like, yeah. like you see things so differently. So traveling with my camera is like my favorite thing in the world. And so um something I look forward to is, is taking, doing those first trips after we're not, um, you know, in the house anymore, those first yeah. trips that we can take, like with my camera and being able to kind of document that and, for sure. um, I get that, create that spark of creativity from being somewhere new. Yeah. I right there with you. <laughs> I love it. Do you ever think about your legacy? Oh gosh. You know, um, I really, I haven't too much. I, I'm definitely one of those people yeah. I think that are like, do something right now. Mm -hmm. What's next, you know? Yeah. So I really should take some time to kind of reflect on what I want, but I feel like I have a, like a long ways to go. Hopefully, yeah. you know, with all blessings my way, like I hope I have a long ways to go sure. um, before I, you know, I still have a lot of building to do. Yeah. Good for you. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Last question. Mm -hmm. Looking back, what advice would you tell little Elise? Oh, gosh. You know, I think I kind of cheated because I, I mentioned it before um, with like the insecurity <laughs> and like not sure. feeling confident in myself. So if I could like go back to I'd probably if I could go talk to anybody, I'd go talk to like 20 year old Elise and yeah. just be like, you know, it's OK to suck at first with stuff mm. like you're only 20 years old. Like you have so much learning to yeah. do. And like be confident with the person that you are and everything else will come like just to to be confident in like who you are is to keep learning keep growing figure everything out because everything you can you know you can figure everything out yeah and but but don't be so hard on yourself I love it. I sounded like my mom just now. That's like <laughs> what she was, I think that was like what she told me my whole 20s. It's like, don't be so hard on yourself. But like, I get it now. I uh, think, you know, for sure. I love it. Well, mm -hmm. it sounds like you got a good family and you got a good uh, support system. You've got some good people around you. And you are amazing. Thank you so much for coming on the show. We really appreciate it. Shane, I appreciate this so much. Thank you so much for um, take, letting me share my story and for taking the opportunity, taking the time and opportunity. Um, I really appreciate it. Absolutely. One more time before we go, let everybody know where they can find your stuff and, and direct them to your website. Yes, um, mainly um, Instagram. You can see everything um, at Elise Jokinen. Um, I also have a website where I have a print shop, my blog. Um, it's at www.elisejokinen.com. Cool. And I'm also on Facebook too, which is new and growing, but you can find me there as well. Awesome. We'll get you tagged on, on all of those as well. And so people can find you. 
appreciate it. And I have my newsletter too. So if anybody yes. is interested in sparking creativity every Monday morning, I send out some fun, fun goodies every Monday morning. Awesome. Awesome. I want to get signed up for that for sure. Thank you again Thank so you. much for coming on, Elise. Really do appreciate it. Yes, enjoy the rest of your day with your wife. And thank you so much, Shane. You bet, you bet. Keep going. Thank you all all so much for listening. Your contributions help us tell more stories like Elise and stories just like yours. Speaking of contributions, please visit us on Facebook and Instagram where you can like and comment on our posts. If you want to go above and beyond, please share the Crazy Face Uno podcast with your friends and family or just random strangers on the street. We're welcome to everyone. Please visit crazyfaceuno.com. There you can purchase items from our online store and donate. Once again, your contributions help us share more stories like Elise's and stories just like yours. Thanks again for listening. We love you all. Peace.